Kia ora koutou. Welcome back to the Stag Raw Podcast. This episode, number 304, I'm joined by Dr. Will O'Connor. His job is to make faster runners and more informed coaches. He's known as the running science guy. Dr. Will O'Connor utilizes his PhD in sports science and experience as an elite ultra athlete to help athletes and everyday people realize their potential. Whether you're struggling to get out the door or you need help setting a new personal best, Dr. Will O'Connor can help you achieve your goals. Ultra endurance requires an extreme level of preparation. Not only do you need to devote your life to training, but you also need to maintain a healthy balance with the rest of your life to avoid injury and burnout. Staying healthy whilst exercising countless hours means doing all the little things right. Understanding the human body allows Will to tailor his training and advice to match the individual needs of the people that he works with. Make sure you check out uh, all of Will's links, drwilloconnor.com. Check out his uh, YouTube, his Instagram, make sure you're following along there um, and sign up to his coaching courses. You can find all of those. The links are in the show notes. Will and I enjoyed uh, the last of the Arepa cans that I have. Must get myself on some more of those. If you'd like to get yourself a bulk order of ready to drink Arepa or their powder capsules or brain shots, use the discount code STAGRAW for 20% off it at uh, checkout. Hope you enjoy this one. Make sure you are subscribed. Um, if you make sure you've left a rating on this podcast, you know, there's multitude of podcasts out there. Will's got two. <laughs> um, so if you listen to his make sure you're doing the same make sure you're leaving rating and reviews and subscribing to those because you know it's not easy there's a lot of work goes into this we are out there trying to expose you and, and others to a life less ordinary give you examples of people living into their dream implementing it the uh, trials and tribulations that go with it but also the tricks and tools and habits allow them to keep going and keep living into uh, what it is they're passionate about so if you can do that that'd be much appreciated it's a simple task it's just at the top of the show there hit those five stars that'd be hugely appreciated right without further ado let's get into this episode 304 with dr will o'connor science driven training cheers Mark, that'll help us. <laughs> Lovely. Dr. Will O'Connor, Ryan O'Connor. It's not as quite the ring as Joe Rogan and Seth Rogan, but <laughs> yeah. Probably no relations. Are you part of the West Coast? Yeah, you're part of the West Coast. Joe Rogan, Seth Rogan. No, like, no, 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 not either. Yeah. <laughs> are you part of the West Coast O'Connor clan or no? Yeah. You are? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. What about you? No. Well, maybe, but my great great grandfather. He uh, left his parents died when he was eleven, so we're not quite sure where where his sort of ah oh, right, I see immigrating right, right. roots are. Yeah, no. So we still have um, yeah close ties to the west coast. Yeah, so that's why I've done. Uh, if you're talking about events and stuff, uh, Buller Marathon. Yeah, I'll spin that on there. Oh yeah, sorry. That's good. Uh, uh, yeah, Buller Marathon, uh, Old Ghost, mm-hmm. a couple classics there down in the west coast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there must be a relation of yours. They said there was something like fifty-four first cousins in the uh, Damien O'Connor level. Yeah, like, that's my that's my dad's level. Yeah, <laughs> you should ask my wife about it because we went to uh, so granddad's brother. Granddad passed away way back, but um, granddad's brother John O'Connor. Yeah, he oh, pretty that's much my dad. No. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he um, big big personality in the West Coast, like just set up the gun club he set up the um the the buller Marath- helped set up buller Marath- like you know just just one of those it's the everything. farm the farm coming into town through the gorge is like on on the left hand sides the o'connor farm one of them uh and uh yeah so we anyway passed away and we went to the funeral there <laughs> and then uh emma's like you don't know all these people do and i was like yep yeah, that's <laughs> like you know, like because we, we yeah just we've always gone down like Merchison or um around 
around the west westport west coast for christmas and things nice um because dad grew up to tacky valley uh and yeah everyone would just show up and so then we go to the the westport races on boxing day <laughs> and you just met everybody yeah and then there's a couple of reunions in there and so and then on my level like um the cousins are all pretty similar age so yeah. we did to get get together a bit and then dad had um seven brothers and sisters so you end up with a few cousins just through that absolutely yeah 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 i went to a, a jones reunion that wasn't even our family tree last uh, year last year i think it was or started this year and they sort of rivaled they had a six a tier the same tier as that 54 they had a tier that was 64 relations yeah. wow yeah that's... but um they they went from colic bay down south to up north to whangarei and they interbred with some uh, Yugoslavians, so I think that really <laughs> helped, to, <laughs> helped to spread spread stuff out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a bit of um, with, the, the, with those Joneses of sort of Welsh via Scotland with a bit of Irish thrown in. So I think they were good breeders. <laughs> yeah, I mean Joneses. Just... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and you so you did the the South Island Ultra. Yeah, that'd be my most recent yeah. Ultra. Yeah, and you decided no, nah, I'm not having any fun doing this. <laughs> Uh, you ran so fast yeah well i mean when you're going against dan jones uh who just finished 12th over the weekend at utmb nice. 11th at western states and he won title he's just like a weapon he mm-hmm. just wins everything um and another jones right? yeah yeah uh yeah and so you finish an hour behind him and you're like oh maybe i didn't go that fast but anyway so the the goal with that was uh, they put up 10 grand if you ran under eight hours oh, for a hundred. John did that. Uh, the race organizer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they got a lot of backlash. Did you see it? No. You didn't see it? Uh, um, what's, what's, what causes backlash for some prize money? That uh, equality, gender equality, and the ability to meet the eight-hour mark. Okay, so um, back to UTMB, who won the last three? Corny de Walter. <laughs> yeah, but not overall. Oh, is it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, it was if you broke eight hours, but you won overall yeah. as well. And so then it was because, and anyway, they then they offered the, it for not, uh, nine hours under. They just didn't think about it. They were yeah. just like, um, but they got the, yeah, a lot of backlash because the trolls came out and then it was just... <laughs> We won't get into it. But anyways, no, I hear, so, I hear uh, running social media, is, there's, there's some gremlins in there. I think it's in isn't it anything. Yeah, probably. Is it, is it? Like, you're yeah. just saying how your mate's, like, you know, struggling to put guns in his title of stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's just what Actually, it is. Actually, yeah, in a, in a hunting Facebook page, it's the only place that someone's just, like, written random stuff. And I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you even listen? <laughs> you okay? Yeah, you yeah. okay, man? <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, anyway... 10 grand if you won and it was uh and you went under sub eight Mm -hmm. uh so that was like um four minute just high just under five minute k's Mm. for 100 k's and they say trail but it was like it's like kind of like a gravel you know and it was around just under a thousand meters of elevation Mm. and so i knew that that would be the absolute epitome of like my abilities Mm -hmm. and whether i could do that or not and so i'd done eight and a half hours a few years back and i was in good shape and i cooked myself at uh the tatawera ultra and mm-hmm. pulled out at 80k and heat exhaustion has been like a theme for me through my i guess quote unquote career or mm. like exploits and uh ultra and triathlon and stuff like that and uh yeah so there's it does timing really worked and i was like i'm gonna go for it i'm just gonna send it and so yeah got through halfway and uh uh, so we get yeah three fifty nine, and I thought okay, so as long as it's not too bad from here, I think I can hold together. Was that going up the elevation or not? Really? Yeah, we were kind of, I was halfway. So yeah. and I was like, or oh. and then then the wheels kind of fell off, um, and this is where I kind of had my epi- epiphany, where I was like, uh, I signed up to ultras maybe twenty seventeen, I yeah. think, um, and. I was like finishing off my PhD and I was like, what? I can't do triathlon. It's just too time consuming. Mm. And then running, I just didn't really, it didn't excite me in like wanting to go fast. And so this ultra thing, it's a bit of a buzz. And there was some like, I don't know, mental proof in there of like how hard I was. Like, was I hard enough? Was mm-hmm. Could I handle this challenge? And uh, so through that, 
that I just fell in love with ultra running as many people do like um mm. in the the challenge you know of of the physical and mental um synergy of just like pushing yourself and finding your limits uh and so then i got yeah i got into tatawera i'm kind of there's a long-winded way of explaining this yeah, no, anyway tatawera 2021 and so long story short i was stretched out of the forest just down the road there <laughs> at 95k um Shit. because i was like convulsing and um cramping from like my insides were cramping like everything yeah. like the most immense amount of pain Le- legitimately like i just thought i was dying i yeah. thought i've gone too far and so this is from it was at 95k i like f- hit a bad spot at 60k yeah and so for the next kind of like four five hours i just like trudged through and i was like this is what i'm doing it like this is what it's for i'm going to show my son who was like uh would have been just a year old then yeah. like this is you don't give up like this is what it's about and i mentally just went i went beyond that point like put myself in physical like da- endangered myself yeah, yeah. and um yeah like I was, I was just like throwing up and i was i was in total whilst you were trying to run no um uh, when i was on the ground yeah like i just couldn't i couldn't walk i could i lost complete control mm. and before that i was using a, my legs were in so much pain I was using a stick to get mm-hmm. down the stairs, the quarry track steps um, up in the forest. And uh, so much, every single step was like this excruciating pain, excruciating. Like, and then I'd just been lecturing on um, like the... Do as I say. The, as the, I do. Um, kind of like the, uh, I guess the, the biochemistry of like neurological drive and, mm-hmm. and like motivational theory and stuff. And I was like, well... I know that this pain is just kind of an illusion like because i can't really be in that much pain because my legs aren't broken or anything like that so yeah. actually if i can just disassociate from the pain i will get through this like i'll get to the finish line it's just pain and uh in the end like i i somehow managed to like push beyond the point where it was like i was just scary it was really scary it was scary for my wife and like in my pacer who to run back and then so the, did you break the central governor theory yeah and uh, <laughs> the central book yeah and you can right and so um one of the people i was researching with when i was at uni he actually showed like in the oh we'd have to get into the central government we can do that later yeah but anyway you can you yeah. can um that's uh, uh what's ryan saying is like there's a black box that essentially just go okay you've gone too far stop mm. and whatever it is heat or um pain or yeah oxygen deprivation like you were just there's a black box that goes okay stop now and uh well i mean i didn't because i'm still alive right mm. so <laughs> here we are uh, the joke over woods again <laughs> yeah, <yes. laughs> and yeah i just buddy oh man i went so far like i was still just convulsing and throwing up like five hours later yeah. in, in the hospital bed and um so yeah, I went. I went too far. What did they do for you? Nothing, because like I just was like not even a, a drip or what? Nah, nah. Because um, I mean, you can yeah. There's stuff that goes on behind the scenes, and uh, like the way the medical professionals look after you in events, because the event doesn't want to be attached to yeah. like getting someone sent to hospital, so they prefer to go to the medical tent. Yeah, and uh, so there's some stuff around that um, because I. Yeah, yeah. So, like they flew a helicopter and to try and actually pick me up because otherwise they're gonna have to like walk me out, which the police did. Yeah. Um, what, yeah. So it was like this weird scenario as well, as well um, of how I ended up getting stretched out of the forest, and then my wife just like drove me to the finish line, <laughs> so, so the, so the um, doctors could look after me. Which, anyway, um, yeah. So and then. Uh, the following year was when I was going to do... Then was like... We're still in COVID yeah. kind of thing. Like, that's 2021. So, we pretty much had no racing up until that. And then somehow, Tatawa just, like, jumped in. Like, mm. just, like, fit in in February 2021. And then pretty much nothing. Everything was cancelled again. And then Tatawa 2022 was cancelled. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. And so then... And I subsequently got injured anyway. Uh, and then I did, like, a, a 60K in Wellington, which is hard, but it's not hard hard like mm-hmm. when you're used to running 
hundreds and stuff uh and so this was like this tatawera was like i'm going i'm putting everything into this and i just got i fucking got heat stroke and it just sucked like mm. it sucked i did everything right i was wearing like i'm a pasty irish <laughs> descent dude so like i struggle in the heat and i had ice and i had long white sleeve like long white um long sleeve top i like everything to cool down i was watching my heart rate still happened and i was like i can't that's yeah. it like i can't i did everything i just controlled i would paced well and was so deflated and then so this like so this is the sick going back to terror yeah yeah like, so i still didn't finish again yeah and um so then like there's like this 10 grand for a sub eight and i was like i'm gonna give it a crack and so i did and then in it was the first time around like 30 k's to go where like uh, it's like you have a plan until you punch in the face mm. that was kind of my punch in the face mm-hmm. right? I was like and uh, it's the point there which happens in any ultra any event but like ultras is just like um, the epitome of, of like of the piano falling on you because you still have so far to go mm. like it's never in a 10k or a half marathon even a marathon if you're like faster if you're even like doing say three and a half hours it might you might still quote unquote only have half an hour to go and you mm. can kind of get you've done so many half an hour runs in your bloody training like you can just get through it and uh whereas with an ultra you're like okay well fuck, i still got 30 40k to go you know and i'm like I'm I, was, I was like they were 15k to go oh, 54 that's, but that's, <laughs> that's the you know the equivalency stuff i was like yeah well maybe it's duration based yeah you know, like. yeah yeah well, then, yeah, well what, yeah what did you say top eight so yeah seven and a half hours in total <laughs> <laughs> similar feelings not 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 the same extent probably <laughs> yeah so uh and then so that was coming on and then i was like well i like i just know i'm gonna finish this thing mm. like i know like this hurts and it sucks but it's kind of fun but like i just know i'm gonna go there Mm -hmm. like i can go to that place and i'll push through and that and i was like oh i I don't want this anymore like i don't oh wow i don't need this like i've um had so much not so much struggle but we've been through some shit you know with covid and becoming a parent within covid and sickness in the family like just in other races and stuff and i was like i don't want to do this anymore mm-hmm. like i don't need to prove i think what it was is like i don't need to prove that i'm really hard mm-hmm. anymore like i just to myself like it wasn't about proving anything to anyone um and so yeah and just like because i i moved into third place around that time i'd overtaken and so there's motivation to stay in the race you know try and catch second who knows where they are stay away from fourth and all that um but yeah it was, it was super interesting to just be like oh i don't whether it's maturity or what like i'll go back to ultra running for mm-hmm. sure like i still have lots that i want to achieve but just in terms of that sense of like yeah the proving that you can like withstand this challenge of an ultra mm-hmm. um yeah so with with terror on your doorstep is it like you want to go there and complete a hundred and complete a miler or it's not even like that um nah 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 well, what do you mean <laughs> what like that you know that like say it's it's not well Simon Cochran sort of said you, you can run an ultra but to race the ultras is where it gets starts getting really really hard yeah so I mean when just after my son was born eight weeks after I did come 12th at Tarawera right um and so I really really wanted that top 10 um and also just like then I was like oh maybe if I get some qualifying points because it's a world series race I could maybe go and race somewhere else yeah um and I'm not really interested in becoming like a pro I just would like the opportunity to race like at Mm -hmm. a high level like Mm -hmm. it's just um it opens doors to be able to access some of these races that you might otherwise have to go into a lottery for Mm. or something like that Mm. um and so yeah then to just roll around here uh, like i'm not interested in in, in doing that yeah yeah i got asked asked to play a social game of rugby last week and like i had bad bad concussion the last time i played competitor of rugby which was in cambridge and then i played at what level uh, Premier Reserve. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sort of between the two. Um, Hotep- Before? Hotepu. 
Yeah, oh, it does. I was Leamington. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the game. That's oh, was it? That's the oh, bell yeah, of the yeah. bell of the bridge. That they, yeah, yeah. They want me to come play, and I said, ah. Oh. And I've just been like stewing on it all weekend. Like, do I want to do that? And I've broken my face playing social rugby. Um, you know, I broke my nose playing social water polo. <laughs> you know, I haven't. I don't have any condition for rugby. I'm fit, but I don't have condition for rugby. And I'm like, you know, if I go there on a Saturday and you know, break a collarbone or even just do an AC joint and ruin four weeks. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. And then worst case scenario, I get knock on the head and end up a vegetable again for, you know, months on end. I'm like, oh, I just can't do that. And then, and then like the whole thing of like, I know that competition is like what I hold. That when I think you hear the Clifton Strengths Finder, and no. that looks at your strengths and there's 34 strengths and competition's my number one yeah yeah and, and like I've even found it playing ball games with my stepdaughter and like she beats me and I'm just like oh this is getting to a real weird position oh, where yeah, I've, so I've got to beat you back twice and then I've got to get out of this <laughs> so on the beers when someone's like oh you won't though because you yeah, can't yeah, that, then you're like put another beer in the funnel yeah, like I can do stuff. six yeah yeah. Well, yeah yeah. there's countless examples of that <laughs> working at the cook in Dunedin eh? it was like four second jug scales and um, Bobby Dowling who's still a weapon at, at uh, lumberjacking he, he his um, yard glass I think was like 30 seconds so we're all like you know if you're doing a yard glass it's got to be some minutes on uh, stuff yeah, and yeah. I remember rocking up to a party at um, in Auckland and my mates had funnels and they were just sort of you know chugging them down I was like give it here like boom, 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 blew, the, blew the fluff into this thing and really do it <laughs> but you just that yeah I don't know I, I, I think going into a game and I found that the year I played in Australia like those those guys were playing rugby to have beers whereas I was playing rugby to play rugby and like in I don't know that's what I found when I because I played rugby until the first year of uni yeah like after and that's what I found going from first of thing yeah to like um, yeah we we had to uh, I guess juniors, Colts, yeah, Colts. Or whatever. That's um, in Christchurch, right? Yeah. Who'd you play for there? Maris. Maris, Maris yeah. Maris Albion. Um, and yeah, like, this is like 50 50. Mm. You had the guys just coming out of school being like, yeah, let's try and maybe make a team or like get spotted or just be super into it. Yeah. And then, uh, then you had the others who were like, well, let's send it, you know, for the Bears. Like, and I had a foot in both camps for mm-hmm. sure for sure being down living away from home first year out of uni but then i was like i need more like I how need close more. were you to playing premier um nah i was like i was good like i had a trial when i was at school for hawks bay yeah um the under 19s but i was skinny and i was a little i was yeah my skills weren't great like i was good fit <laughs> like yeah. i was always fit good around the ball good around the ruck good tackle but like my um, ball handling was atrocious yeah like it it sucked <laughs> like um and so yeah i would have been a hard would have been a hard pick to yeah. actually make anything and probably if you'd come out of st thomas's you might have been right but yeah yeah come, you know they got that whole thing you're if you're from another region you've got to give yourself like two or three years to be in a system eh? it's, yeah 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 for sure or and, like if you're in the, if you're in the academy, academy or something they would have yeah. been like yeah, you'd come straight in <laughs> yeah yeah um and yeah, I wasn't really that phased about mm. it. Like, I was definitely all in on the uh, rugby, like, culture, just like we are the epitome of New Zealand and everyone <laughs> else is nothing, kind yeah. of, you know? Um, but then through just living away from home, being at at uni, you just meet so many other people. I was living in the Hall's residence mm. and you just... Uh, your Which eyes one did you go to? Uni Hall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> Nada level two. Why is it called the ghetto? Well, there's the ghetto and there's the, like there's the old part of Uni Hall and there's the new part. Yeah. So that was the Ritz, and that was typically where like um, the Auckland private school <laughs> kids went. They like didn't get into College House. Yeah. Which was like the high yeah, my achievers. Bro, my brother went there. Adam and Bagel where you just felt like, what am I doing here? This is cool, but <laughs> where do you go? The Ritz. At College House. Oh, College House. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another because they go for two years and then they yeah. wear like um. Yeah, I got, to, I got to go to a formal dress a and stuff. Like, and yeah, borrow my brother's suit. Look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, I've been through that that thing. Yeah, you know, about like. And so, does that come back again when you like look at events? Like, what do I want to do here? Am I gonna 
what did, what did Mike Dawson say? Like, unleash the beast or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I, I can't let my ego go. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to compare myself to him, but uh, yeah. So now it's just turned to the track like, yeah. and trying to run really fast. Um, Sweet. Uh, that's the goal. Hopefully, I just got injured, so it <laughs> what have you done? Sucks. Um, not sure. I got a scan to see if I got a stress fracture in my uh, tibia, fibula fibula Ooh. actually but i've got some kind of tib i thought it was the physio thought it was anterior um no posterior uh tibialis strain like the yeah. muscle on the inside and then the i went for a run he was like progress back and then the posterior and then it just felt like i broke my leg and so i was like mm, i think you, <laughs> i think you misdiagnosed here yeah. so i'm not sure and that really sucks because that's like i just turned like literally just turned 35 mm. and then i wasn't doing anything crazy mileage because i wasn't doing uh not training for ultras right mm-hmm. and so i'd been training shorter nothing longer than two hours in my long run and i thought i was just i was getting fast i was just killing it and then i just got an injury and i was like i was really taking care of myself here so I was like, is this old age like is this <laughs> am i like struggling now you yeah. know um and i was stoking because i was running with uh, a local legend michael voss who's heading over to um, the World Half Marathon champs. Wow. And so he's, like, quick. And so it was it was fun to, like, train with someone who's, like, 20, you know, 10 years younger than me and, like, way, like, legit fast, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, yeah, and so like, oh, no, like, am I getting old? Like, is this <laughs> is it happening? Like, and yeah. so um, coming back, I'm going to have to revise, I think, maybe my loading, mm. like, and maybe actually take care of some strength and conditioning. Which yeah. You, suck because i don't really like it i don't not that i don't um prescribe it or yeah. i'm not a fan like i don't not that i don't think it works or anything like that it's just personally i'm not it's not my vibe so what do you tip the scales at around 75 yeah kgs. yeah yeah and so like you know what what, what do you think is going to be the best metric for you like if you go too strong are you going to be too heavy or yeah 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 um well, like, if you're running, you want to go faster, you just got to be lighter. Yeah. Like, because you're just, you can, if I kept all the same muscle mass, like, I'm pretty lean dude, but, like, um, if you can generate the same force on the ground, then when you're lighter, you have more of that force is going to be into Ford's velocity rather than fighting gravity yeah. on the way up because you got to go up and forward as running, essentially. Um, and so, yeah the lighter you are the faster you can go but i've never been super not never but over recent years i haven't been too phased on my weight yeah like cause just eat healthy eat well and train <laughs> yeah and takes care of itself yeah 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 so you said like you never had ambitions of going pro with ultra you tried to go sort of semi-pro with triathlon right yeah i was actually um my mum gave me a scrapbook of like two things one was all of my old um uh, report cards mm-hmm. from school from like the age of like five all the way up to I left school yeah and then um, all of like newspaper clippings and things and I read some of them and I said man I was deranged I was really <laughs> like did they quote you and stuff yeah what yeah. these yeah 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 these yeah. newspaper things about like my uh, I got third in this race up at half Ironman up in Auckland and couple other results and i was like yeah now it's my ticket to go pro and this is how it's going to work and all of this and uh i was what 22 21 22 23 ish like um at around that time and i really just thought i bet i was better than i was were you racing at sam mayhew as well was he around there i know the name but i don't yeah because his he was in biomedical science with me and then when i went back to optometry he was in medical school and he was the thing it, it, the early days of him back in medical school he was still doing triathlon and i was like oh is he gonna gonna cut it because I, I swam with um tony dodds back in invercargill so oh was, yeah 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 i was following him along and then seeing sam and like you know on that on that cusp of of you know making it in triathlon yeah <laughs> i was like oh that's an interesting thing but you're doing medicine as well like man that's a lot on your plate yeah yeah that's typically how it goes I think there's like something about those kind of personalities that like you can't do it <laughs> you just um nothing yeah i don't know what it is that i read this really good article i'd have to fish it out um someone sent it to me about why do so many p- 
PhDs do ultra running. Yeah. And there's something around the cognitive mental challenge of stepwise achieving goals. Well, I think that's the same with trying to do medicine, eh? Like, you you were saying about that level of derangement. You need to sort of have a level of derangement to keep keep going in, in that. Like, if I just complete this block of work, I will be through to the next block of work. <laughs> yeah, it's this delayed gratification thing of um, this really minuscule end goal that mm-hmm. I think you maybe put a really large emphasis on in terms of like what it will mean for you to achieve it. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, this it's medicine school, uh, like the statistics on finishing a PhD are very similar. Yeah. And like, because you get into it you know, I think mine end up taking me probably close to five years. And yeah. like I had a scholarship for three years um, and you're so excited and you get into it, you write it all up, so much writing and stuff and mm. you do the research. That's really fun. Like, um, you know, f- for me, it was like taking blood samples, having people in there on the like bike. Like the, the and, actual experiment. Is yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's really cool. And then you're in this monotonous um, and analyzing the data, mm. you know, and that's, but it can be exciting kind of because you're actually teasing out findings and actually seeing some significant change, whatever you've been looking for. But then you've got to write this book, mm. like this thesis. Mm. And about the same time is when people are like asking kind of, um, you've got quite a bit of, uh, I guess, niche um, experience and knowledge. Mm-hmm. And so people are kind of like, oh, approaching you for jobs like mm-hmm. or you could come work or there's uh there's just more opportunities because you go to these conferences and mm-hmm. uh so yeah there's a there's a lot of opportunity to just not write it <laughs> and still kind of end up where you wanted to be like yeah. you get that you get to delay having a real job you mm. get to do what you love you get paid not well but you get money facilitate life yeah yeah, yeah. you <laughs> can just like live the dream kind of um if you're into uh, research and um, what have you like to do outside of that because it's so flexible yeah. uh, and then and then you can kind of just like go and get a real job or get paid doing maybe something that you love like if there's a startup that's interested in creating something that you are in and they whatever you know um, because writing a thesis is just so dull because you yeah, know no one's going to read it Sam, but, Sam who's it um, Aripa, I think he's yeah. in his PhD at the moment in yeah. neuroscience and it's like this is a similar thing like oh you've got a job um, sort of transcribing your research to to the layman yeah but in the meantime you've still got to like get it done <laughs> yeah and just like oh I have no idea I have so much respect for someone like that who yeah. has like a life like I didn't have a life like I was I mean my wife um, she was just retired from professional cycling and then she started her PhD. The guy I do my podcast, Performance Advantage podcast with, Matt, he was there. We just had such a great lifestyle. Like, we all flattered together. Um, and so we had, like, to help each other out, to, like, finish this thesis. We had, like, working group and, you know, we had all these, we yeah. do these five-minute workouts, and, <laughs> like, every hour and stuff when no talking time. Um, yeah, like, if I now, like I've, you know, I've seen people doing it with kids and jobs mm. and, and training for like an Ironman and stuff like that. I'm like, how, how did you do that? Like I had nothing going on. Yeah. Like I was trying to start two businesses, but I was just more trying to distract myself. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like pro, proactive um, procrastination, productive procrastination. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, much respect to them because it's, it's so much work and it kind of, unless you like, um, have ended up say doing what I've done mm. um, where my brand or my business is very much attached to the Dr. Will O'Connor like having the PhD if you are um, or you stay in academics once mm. you leave like the PhD doesn't mean as much as like it It makes you really overqualified. So people that, say is that, that like, minuscule goal you're talking about <laughs> yeah yeah like people are like and be, they'll say oh you'll be uh, you know too qualified people won't want to employ you Mm. And then I'd apply for some of these jobs, you know, high performance sport in New Zealand or some other kind of AI, whatever. Mm. And then, uh, you know, some of them would be like, I don't know, like, this is, might not be your level kind of thing. And, uh, like, but I love this stuff. I just love to get in amongst it. But, like, well, we wouldn't be looking for someone with a PhD, right? Mm. Like, you're like, oh, shit, this is what they mean. Like, and then you want to just apply for a job, right? You just want, like, some financial stability. And, 
so you're just kind of applying for a job that's yeah will probably be quote unquote below you maybe yeah, entry level stuff yeah, yeah yeah but you're like I just I don't have any experience like I've just <laughs> yeah. been at uni for 10 years like yeah. and like well we wouldn't employ someone with a PhD you know like because you're going to be too qualified yeah but actually and otherwise you've got this 10 year gap in your uh, CV oh you were just a sportsman for a while yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and uh, how'd you find that oh. so some like some places absolutely love it like I almost got a job with an investment bank mm. Um, because I enjoy finance and I would, I'd studied a little bit to, um, like after I finished my thesis to become like a financial advisor, mm-hmm. I was like, I'll just do a little bit of this, just see, I almost bloody got a job. Mm. Like, well, let's put the Peter, Peter, Atea, Peter Atea story, eh? Like he did medicine, I think he did all the cancer research, um, at Johns Hopkins and then was like, ah, oh, can't be bothered doing this. And went and worked for McKinsey doing risk analysis because he was so good at teasing out data yeah 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 and like same thing you like you've done a phd work of teasing out data like oh, i can see some trends there and all that yeah or like a good employer will see the value in someone who has shown i guess stickability and mm. ability to um synthesize information curate information um but for the most part like especially i mean you got a phd in sports like what's that good for you know and like i think a PhD knowing what I went through I know uh, the, most people have gone through them mm. they're going to be amazing employees for their ability to synthesize really high quality information quite quickly mm. and just be like that's bullshit this is like you need a report done like I'll do it and this will be the information you actually need because yeah. most of it is absolute garbage um, but yeah it's nothing yeah like you're, you're talking about writing the thing like I did um pre honors so they got us to do a research proposal yeah you know and like you think about that you might have quoted 20 papers and then i flatted with a guy when i went back to auckland who had done honors and his dissertation was sitting there and i was like holy shit louis like that's a lot of writing and then you see like say the phd come out and it's like a couple of te- textbooks wide yeah like to know something you know you, you read articles in a publication and you go oh what did they reference and they've referenced kind of like three things broadly on this two things broadly on that two things and then you kind of go but what about this paper right here that says this yeah yeah, yeah. and it puts like, oh no but and then you go oh no it's just an article it, it doesn't matter it, yeah what they've done is is they've synthesized a you know a group of papers that are on one topic and they're not looking at something broadly what's it like to then research something broadly and then bring it in and back to your area of research uh, so that's the skill like mm-hmm. that's the really hard part is you you have got to argue with yourself all the time eh? yeah you got to uh like i guess what's what's the challenge that i really got pulled up on or like the big takeaway from for me was like you you can't say something unless it's like you actually like specifically prove the the point and it fits within like a really well documented piece of literature yeah otherwise you just you just can't say it you can't say like in an article i can say oh yeah well i mean if you're going to do high intensity interval training like in a running context let's do um you know 20 by 30 seconds with 45 seconds recovery and that's going to improve your your vo2 max because your oxygen uptake is going to be blah blah blah. and then it's like if i wasn't specifically measuring your vo2 max can't even mention it Mm -hmm. i can't even like i i could cite a paper and kind of but i i can't really say anything about vo2 max if i am not measuring it and so you you just can't there's what you're showing and what you're proving what you're writing about that just needs to be so yeah well curated and defined to the point of of what you are actually looking at so you can get incredible depth in your topic and so there's none of this like fluff around um yeah, yeah. i did this they did this so therefore it's not yeah not, yeah not correct, is yeah it? yeah um and like yeah because i i did uh low carbohydrate ketogenic stuff and uh, i did males and females and i remember like saying how i had um like one of my theories around it was that you may have heard like women do long better at longer events right and it's because they say that they're better fat burners 
what I found was uh, that I believed that women aren't necessarily better fat burners, they're just crappy carbohydrate burners. Right. And so um, when we, the faster we go, the less we can use fat because mm-hmm. it's a slow fuel to be able to uh, metabolize and convert into a usable form of energy that we need for muscular contractions. Mm-hmm. So whatever that is, like sprinting or hiking, lifting weight, whatever, it, like if you're doing a short bout of it, you're going to, like, you pretty much won't rely on fat the longer you go the more fat you use but you still use carbohydrate Mm. um for sure to um some at some level whether you're doing an ultra marathon over days or you're doing a marathon um over like three or four hours and when we start to look at these shorter events like carbohydrate is more important for your optimal performance and pure purely in a metabolic fuel utilization context and so what i showed is like women when we um took carbohydrate away from their diet they couldn't uh increase their fat metabolism to the level men could and then when we added carbohydrate like to the diet they couldn't metabolize carbohydrate at the rate that men could Mm. and so uh so what I kind of theorized was that women are less metabolically flex- flexible, and so that's their ability to switch between fuels. Um, and so the title of my thesis was Metabolic Flexibility and Endurance Performance. So that's your ability to utilize whatever fuel source is available to get the best like physiological outcome. Mm. Um, and so removing carbohydrates from your diet can improve your fat metabolism. Does that and then um, in turn improve your performance mm. uh, I didn't I didn't see that I did see that in women um, and that's so you said making them more ketogenic improved their performance yeah not in men not in men yeah. but in women it did mm-hmm. and uh, this is because I believe that removing carbohydrate from their diet just lifted their fat metabolism to its absolute maximum and this was in the context of endurance sport yeah yeah so this is over five hours okay right um and <coughs> but then yeah so removing carbohydrate from their diet allowed them to maximally like optimize their fat utilization uh and so yeah so then they could perform they could perform better hmm. um but then because when in the context of the men where that didn't happen was we could f- fuel the men up with carbohydrate and they wouldn't burn fat as well, but they would burn carbohydrate really well. So there's no no problem. Hmm. Didn't really worry as long as they kept ingesting carbs, yeah. like some gels or like Simon. What was he up to? 120 grams an hour. Yeah, yeah, right. So like, <laughs> if he can keep smashing it, he's fine. It doesn't matter what his fat metabolism is. Yeah. Um. Despite what Peter Atier or whatever wants to tell you, um. And then, but in the woman, you can't just feed them up with carbohydrate. Yeah. Because you keep smashing it, but they have a ceiling which is far lower than men. So you're potentially better off trying to optimize their fat metabolism Hmm. because their carbohydrate metabolism is potentially uh, like a a rate limiter. Rate limiter, limiter. yeah. 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 So then Um, how does that flow into their training though and like expressibility of of power and, um, you know, oxygen uptake and all that sort of stuff like... To, you know they've still got to like be nutritionally sound and not create inflammation and leaky gut and all that sort of stuff that's when things start yeah so i mean when and this is why i kind of i i don't mention the topic of my phd a lot because yeah. like once when the articles that i was um like the media released mm-hmm. articles yeah. that, that the mass university and stuff did alongside my research you get so much blowback, mm. you know, just because when you start talking diet, you game over. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like you're open. We're talking about internet trolls. Like you game, you're on. <laughs> like, come at me. You yeah, know? here comes Lane Norton. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, I just, I just wasn't interested. Like, I'm not, I'm not interested in that game. Yeah. Um, because it's it's so complex. And what I was looking at was a very hol- holistic, like macronutrient carbs fats protein yeah like that's it. i wasn't looking at micronutrients or like anything that we're kind of seeing now with um all of these minerals and uh yeah 
like the types of vitamins concentrations mm-hmm. and um trying to optimize human performance in in that way mm. neuro, neurotropics um it was merely just like what is this manipulation of um trying to fill a gap in the research where it was a long adaptation period over four weeks over a long four to five hour endurance bout of exercise randomized crossover design right mm-hmm males and females and it was like typically everything had been if it'd been long duration it had been short adaptation time maybe one week seven days which if you've ever done keto or low carb doesn't work Hmm. um and then if they had a long adaptation period four or five weeks they were doing like a 20 minute time trial Hmm. it's like that's not where low carb is going to optimize um for and so that's what i was going in as um so nothing really like diet related Hmm. um so then i did some other subsequent studies around um, ketone supplements which i didn't really find worked which ones were you using there uh so i used uh one three butane dial yeah which is really interesting because i came is that a um it's a it's a pre no it's a precursor um to it gets metabolized by um no it's not it's not one of the esters um it gets metab it's part it's like I guess that's the half. That's the mm-hmm. cleaved version of the ester. It's mm-hmm. like two kind of butane dials. And uh, yeah, it gets metabolized by alcohol dehydrogenase in the liver to form um, beta hydroxybutyrate, mm-hmm. which is like ketone. If you measure ketones in your blood, that's mm. that's what you're measuring. And you were measuring blood ketones rather than um, acetyl... What's, what's the breath measuring? Acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, as, acetol it's as, as, yeah I think it's both as two yeah, yeah but I think the breath test is only mis- measuring acetone correlated to yeah the acetyl coa yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. is that right no, um, I can't remember long time since I looked at ketones yeah, yeah. it started this podcast actually the proof it supplement I was like as a sales model this sucks maybe you could advertise it <laughs> no you just can't do that either <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so what do they use? Uh, salt. Oh, L, L, yeah. L, L branched, I think, uh, beta hydroxybutyrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, was, that was kind of the uh, selling point, is that they were only using L, or maybe they were using L, I can't remember. Yeah. What, the the correct... Anantema. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, so, yeah, the salt... Because that, that was one of Dom D'Agostino's patents, I think. The salts definitely didn't work. Or maybe 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 it was Ryan Lowry. I can't remember. Um, the so yeah, I I got a um, what is it embargoed copy of the um, Cox thesis where he kind of first used the ester. That's in England, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then I was like, oh like I have a degree in biochemistry so it's like I know what they're using yeah so we, <laughs> so I went to a chemical supplies company Sigma Aldrich ordered this 1-3 butane dial and looked yeah. at it I was like Gosh, I think I can take this I'm pretty sure I can take this <laughs> the FDA has approved it for as a food additive in the states yeah and I was like I'm, I'm pretty sure I can take this so um, anyway I so I had my super, one of my supervisors sitting there and I had a heart rate monitor on blood oxygen saturation stuff and I like drank like a shot of the stuff to see what it would how to go down uh have you have you had stuff i've like just heard the tim ferris yarn about having it in his fridge and being like gasoline <laughs> yeah well so in the double blind study that i did i i um the blind was uh vinegar right yeah and like vinegar with some salt in it like that's what it tastes like yeah <laughs> it's horrendous it's it's there's no way people are just smashing it at the time they were like talking about oh yeah all the team skies like, yeah using it and all of this i was like if they were this in their drink bottle they'd be drinking it and you'd see their face like turn inside out with how ugh, atrocious it because how long would you think it'd last for well so i'd have to look in my thesis but i could get really high um like yeah, black keto i could because that was what lots, lots of people with improve it we're getting high high breath tests high blood ketones but yeah it was you know what was what was the savorability i i, I questioned whether it helped when i had the concussion but then it was also half an hour before i had the skip five so i don't know <laughs> um so 
Yeah, look, look, yeah, and I, I only looked at um, performance, um, and yeah. so the theory is like it's it's a it kind of sits halfway between fat and carbohydrates, mm. and you know how I was saying like the faster you go, the you can't burn fat. Mm. So it's like, well, if we had this alternative fuel because carbohydrates run out, um, maybe we could use we could use ketones. Yeah, if and, you like buff buffered your energy system with more ketones. Yeah, yeah, we could, and then like, how does the body react when it? thinks it's in ketosis yeah and so it's going to preferentially use ketones over blood glucose in the brain or at least that's the theory right and then trying to yeah the, i think the concussion theory was that astrocytes take up all the glucose and then so your neurons starve and so you can get the crossover of ketones and fuel neurons and not get as much brain fog that's the oh, theory yeah. but well i mean they for <laughs> decades decades since like the i don't know i think early, lactate can do a similar thing early um early 20th century they used a ketogenic diet for treating epilepsy yeah 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 and because it had to do with uh gaba um, yeah and yeah i'd have to refresh my i'm, a bit like, yeah, I'm like I'm still, you, what you're saying is what i remember but like i love <laughs> i love being keto like yeah. act like real talk not like oh, i'm gonna have keto slice and keto bread like actually eliminating all carbohydrates from my diet but it's so damn hard like, yeah honestly like, especially now i have a kid i you know. like I, I was i sort of was more paleo and then even while i've been in tokoro living by myself i was you know i was mostly just eating meat and vegetables and then now that i live live with nicole and and, and her daughter like you know i've had so much more pasta and you know we have a have a treats and ice cream. Like, that was pretty bad for you. Have an ice cream every now and again, but yeah, they said like it's in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, it's just it just like yeah, because my wife she's not interested. She did my study. She's done low carb and everything, and she responds well to it, but hates it. Like, mm. Just absolutely, it's like not interested. Um, and so then when you're like, okay, now there's like you know my son's almost four. Mm. And then my wife and me, and it's like, well, we're all going to eat something different, or like, yeah, exactly. And then, uh, then meat kind of just got so crazy expensive as well. I know. We were talking about that today. Like, I went hunting yesterday and uh, heard heard a deer. I was like, shit. Like, and then we we're talking about, like, oh, we just need more meat. Like, some of the people at work have have half a beast and another one's partners are uh, a vet and they're like talking about getting a, a beast and I'm like oh man <laughs> like tell me about it how good would that be you know, yeah you know I've got a paddock out there <laughs> <laughs> we got we got offered a half a beast in the last year and we, we passed it up and I'm kind of regretting that <laughs> yeah well I just did a good deal with one of my clients who runs um, Happy Meat yeah um, out of the out of Hanoa shout out uh, yeah. to, to the gals um, and so yeah we got a we got a gig so we're a bit of a bartering system so yeah that's real high quality meat in the freezer at the moment yeah my, my mate ryan when he was up last week he gave us some um scotch steaks hey they were so good yeah well the problem because like, he's got this meat company he's like the problem everyone just wants scotch so yeah you've know, you got like this whole cow <laughs> that's what my ex is on bed i want like th- you know whatever 10 kgs they're gonna get out of it that's what my ex is on bed said hey i was like yeah, for my daughter's um fifth birthday and i said oh do you butcher your beets he's like no no i just you know we keep them for two years from from wieners to two-year-olds and then sell them on to someone someone to finish them so the problem when you butcher a beast is that you only get he said one eye fillet I mean, I'm like, what do you mean there's two but it, he's like yeah i want 10 i was like oh now i get what you mean <laughs> yeah it's like exactly that you know you get you get a lot of mints and sausages out, out a lot of beasts. Mints and sausage. not that that's bad i'm i'm okay with mints and sausages but we are, when, you, when you want eye fillet or you know, scotch fillets and stuff like that you know, there's only so many of those on a on a kettle beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I guess that's where like the the diet wars. You know, you do you do something about metabolism, but it's in the context of how you fuel it. Then everyone comes out about all the ethics and things of, of food and things like that too. Yeah, that was not there. Uh, so what was this? I guess like 2013 through oh, to yeah. 2015, and then I like finished. I graduated in 2018 five years ago now that was just about when the world started caring about stuff like that yeah. Cowspiracy probably came out around then around then yeah around then it's game over eh? like yeah. now it's yeah so you're doing you're doing a piece of research on sort of an applied ketogenic diet does the likes of Jeff Volek or Stephen Finney and 
Diego Stimmy, but they come say come to the states and talk or anything like that, or it's not. No, nah, because like I didn't like I haven't gotten around to publishing that stuff right yet because publishing is like a whole other thing as you probably know. But um, so nah. But then I didn't want to yeah. anyway. It's like academics is whole swings and roundabout. <laughs> like, it's just this game of like yeah once you're a postdoc then you've just a fundraiser aren't you you just yeah and it's i wasn't interested like and i realized how detached i was from reality mm-hmm. of like i'd go to talk to someone and i just spoke at what i thought was like this low level and then i'm talking about like almost every metabolite in the glycolytic pathway mm-hmm. and like um you know the different types of um like monocarboxylate transporters and it just like and people like slow what's, down what's the carbohydrate i was yeah. like you're fucking joking right and then the people listening to this are like no we're not yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so i was like ah oh, there's i'm uh yeah there's a job for me here like i've I, I love talking about stuff so that's why me and matt started performance advantage podcast and then yeah. yeah just so now it's my job do you do you um like when you're talking like i did selling an enemy and i like always think of like transporters and and things moving across membranes and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Like there's there's some science Instagrams that sort of um, show uh, animations of those sort of types of things. Mm-hmm. And like a couple of times I've like reshared it, be like, this is how my brain works. <laughs> like this is when people are talking like this stuff. That's how I start thinking. Like you know, um, TCA cycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this actual cycle where yeah. like the glycolysis. You go like essentially downwards, down yeah. the ladder. And then you go acetyl CoA, and then on the right hand side, if you're looking at it, it's where beta oxidation like feeds into the acetyl CoA, goes around. Yeah. yeah no, so I, I think like that as well. And then I'm like, okay, so if that goes into your mouth, it goes down here, yeah. goes across the intestinal tract, like membrane. And yeah. 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 Because it did, uh, did anatomy. I, rem- I remember with Stats 101 in biomedical science, I finished early and I couldn't leave, and I had biochemistry that afternoon. So I just like turned my. Um, question paper over and started drawing the TCA cycle so I was like oh, have I got this and then like took it back home like double checked it I was like oh no I've got this <laughs> yeah need, needless to say I didn't A plus the stats 101 but yeah, it was alright yeah. it was good enough <laughs> yeah so like then how do you get out of it like you say you you felt like you were so detached how do you then look at go you know that, that was kind of how I felt in pre honours knowing that I was in Dunedin because I wanted to get into optometry. Yeah. And like, I was, I was playing rugby there and I was like, saw, you know, that was the Stag Shield era. I saw Southland Rugby like doing oh, quite good yeah, just down the road at home. Yeah. And I was like, you know, doing this research proposal about leptin resistance. And I was <laughs> yeah. like thinking like, I've, I've looked at about 20 of these papers and I'm sure there's hundreds more to go. And like, is it honours or is it two years of master's? And then what do you do then? Like, then is it just basically like, uh, yeah, do the PhD, <laughs> and then it's then you're 35, like I am now, and you've and you've got the the PhD to show for, it and go, well, what do I what do I do now, or do I just go be a builder, or do I get into optometry, and that's evidently where I ended up. But like, when you've gone through the PhD path, 2018, then what do you go? Right, how do, where, where do I turn now? Like, say so you're overqualified. <laughs> yeah, fuck, man you should go ask like just have, there could be a podcast just on like interviewing everyone who's done a phd and what they're doing yeah. now it's like so i know one guy um who's moved here um from he was over in sydney but he went and studied law yeah oh, wow. and then um my, my wife who did her phd is hayden's well. got a phd yeah, Pritchard. uh no no he he's got a master's master's yeah. yeah i think he's doing his phd right at the, at the moment yeah um and so he's working for the government. Yeah. Uh, so when you go to this thing, and you're like, okay, I would like to earn some money now. I've been getting <laughs> like uh, 25 grand tax free, which is okay when you like were in your early 20s and now you're in your, like for me, I was in my late 20s. Yeah. That's better than being like a later life studier. Like I just kept studying. So yeah. I'd never had money. So it's like, whatever. How, how did you jump from biomedical science? What did you do? Honors, master's? Uh, so I did biochemistry, yeah, the undergrad, and then I did honors. Honors, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was right around the first Christchurch earthquake. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was kind of like toying up where to go, um, stay at 
Canterbury University, um, go to Melbourne, or go to um, Massey. And what would you, would you go to Monash or University of Victoria or do you know? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was Monash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so... Yeah, and then the, we had the earthquake. It was like November, I think. Mm. Um, uh, might have been earlier than that, actually. I was, at, I was at home. I think it was after, or like during any exams or after any exams. No, it was definitely before because we still had lectures. Okay. Yeah. Or well, maybe it was. Hmm. And then because it, it wrote off my whole um, third year project. Right. Yeah, that I was doing um, in the uh, with. Um, Ag research, I think it was, and we we're looking at amyloid fibrils. But anyway, and we had them growing in like the one of the um, fumids. Yeah, and they're all smashed. But uh, so then, it, yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll go. I had this internship uh, with between. It was like a collab between the um, uh, the chemistry department and the sports science department. Use mm-hmm. nuclear magnetic resonance to measure what was in sweat. And so anyway, I went up and I stayed with my auntie and Palmy and, and did that. And uh, then I just stayed stayed on and did that. But yeah, so then you come out of a PhD and it's just like, what do I, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Like, how do I find a job? And um, yeah, do I want to stay in academics? And then do I want to do something else? So I was actually over that last year and a bit um, importing and distributing a running um, brand from Sweden. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... And then doing a little bit of coaching. And so I was just like, oh, I'll just keep trying to do this mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, and, but yeah, and then, I don't know, some, it's just hard, man. Like, because you, you're like, you're so burnt out as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Even, it doesn't matter how passionate you are about the topic. You just, you just had to go so hundy mm-hmm. on it. Like, you know, like 4 a.m. starts and to set up the lab and then you're writing it all up. And so, um yeah i don't i don't people just end up everywhere i think did, did you ever feeling like you missed a valid piece of research or something like that like you hadn't read an important no, part no 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 i was <coughs> not at all like my supervisors were amazing um i got bloody dragged over the coals by this guy from uh sydney um on who was a pro carbohydrate mm-hmm. dude who had done a lot of research with um Ask you can rope and uh, mine was not pro carbohydrate mm. research and say so like you need to cite this and this and I was like this is outside in anyway so um, and uh, who was the lady who wrote the book with um, Schofield Karen yeah yeah so she she uh, reviewed my thesis yeah. as well and uh, Catherine someone yeah, um, it's in. Karen's in that's it yeah uh, and they were rough like yeah yeah, yeah for sure and so that was what took like it took me like another six months i didn't get to pass so there was other other universities yeah so you have two you have one within your university Mm -hmm. you have one external which can be in the same country and then you have one like international (laughs) um and so yeah so to like to pass and then so i got i didn't i was really i was so over it man i was Mm -hmm. so over this fucking thing and um i Normally you'd pass with minor revisions that your supervisor can mark off mm-hmm. you off with, um, but I got major revisions, yeah. and so like I had to not rewrite, but I had to really, really go above and beyond to adjust. So, so it is about how you're arguing your case, or just you've got yeah, to yeah, yeah, bring in more citations and stuff. Yeah, yeah, just um, just I I had gaps, I definitely did, and because I was so over it, mm. like, and so when you got to read this comprehensive book like start to finish Mm. and make sure you haven't missed anything from your methodology through to like every aspect of your methodology through to the introduction linking to the discussion to the literature review and and the opening chapters um to the like closing statements it's you, you just have to keep reading it it's not like a book where like i'm i'm kind of piecing together my book on like the science of running or mm-hmm. like running in the 21st century with technology and science you you already know what like i know what i wrote about like gps mm-hmm. you know it's not really going to change i can just leave it and forget about it. it doesn't need to link to every single study and the type of methodology that was um has been used to test 
different gps devices you know mm. like i don't need to read it you can just write it and leave it but when you've written something about um and cited these these particular papers then you've got to reread them to make sure they did actually say what you said they said in the literature review plus what you then are using that piece of paragraph to uh argue in your discussion mm -hmm. of a separate research article like it's you just have to keep reading that whole are, thing. are you allowed to like get them on the phone like the head researcher or whoever's been cited in the paper or no you can try you can try yeah no one, like, i mean when you're looking at stuff from like 1984 or mm. like even earlier for some of the um original research of like carbohydrate metabolism and stuff it's, yeah <laughs> It's, like it's, a, it's hardcore man it's, it's, it's a lot it's, it's there lot. it's in the textbook yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah textbooks are funny things as well like when you go through it and you're like man because that when did they ever say that to you like at uni in the early years we're like nah. the textbook what you learn in this textbook is probably not going to be the case if you do like yeah you know, later I, on I, I don't think we did because like i only did biomedical science so that was like foundations oh well, no i did anatomy but yeah like biomedical science was like foundations of of human body systems yeah, yeah. and so it was kind of like you know this this is the guts this is the heart yeah this, this is, is a lungs. cell this, yeah, this is, is a, like cell. a mitochondria yeah. this is this yeah. is what it looks like this is what it looks like anatomy yeah like neuro neuroanatomy was more like lecturing from research whereas like cellular and reproduction was still very much mitosis like, meiosis yeah, yeah, yeah. rudimental like yeah this is a period this is what's going on <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 um and so that was undergrad and then optometry it's kind of like it's it's gone from being a school of psychology to a school of science to now a school of uh, medical science and so i think probably now that it's a school of medical science that, that that's producing a lot more research about eyes and vision systems and applications of that then i think they probably do have a bit more of that like the science and this is now developing yeah 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 whereas it was like very much an art and even though i've got like this um optometry uh ophthalmology so workbook from otago that uh, you read a lot of the this, this stuff of like how to test an eye and how to look at an eye and how to review an eye using very rudimental tools and you like read and you go you guys were guessing yeah and like <laughs> now we have things like ocular coherent tomography so like a beam of light bounces off the layers of the retina and you can like see it in plain sight like oh yeah there's fluid there or there's blood there okay, yeah, yeah. you know you're, you've lost nerves you know you've got glaucoma you've got a swollen nerve you've got inflammation that sort of stuff and it's so like i have that understanding from reading something that's old that's just like oh you guys guessed yeah yeah <laughs> now now we somewhat know and now as ai is interpreting data out of these machines and giving answers you're like well even we're kind of looking like we're guessing yeah yeah <laughs> like yeah. We're, we're just yeah. interpreting this this thing's starting to know yeah 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 so uh, through through the 10 years of practicing it's kind of like, oh yeah but then there's other things that like the inter patient interaction and the art of of optometry is still there like you know have have had people that worked with that graduated in in the late 60s early 70s and you see like the very art and psychological sort of behavior that they have in, in up, up in, cells <laughs> <laughs> now, if, 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 they've, if they've got like a subspecialty like like mark eagle that I, that I worked with in hawks bay um at shack he's there like he's very much into behavioral optometry and like i referred him a patient with um dyslexia the other week and the report he wrote back to me like he's using new tools that, so really objective testing for eye tracking and things like that but just then the sort of confidence that he instills in someone because a lot of a lot of their sort of limitation to read or their limitation to concentrate is based on their nervous system and so it does really become you know you've got to be this sort of champion this sort of psychologist in a way but specifically about vision and learning and reading mm. and writing you know so it's you know he's sort of got this person that you know you're very intelligent you know um, you've got a huge potential, you've got a supportive family, you're in a supportive school, I want you to become an expert in um, alternative devices so that you can, you know, there's no excuse for not learning. Yeah. It's just that you're not going to be reading a book, you're going to be doing talk to text and text to talk. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when it comes to exams, you're going to have a read writer in more time, but you're going to be able to um, transfer that knowledge into 
the test yeah, yeah. so that's that's kind of where optometry is it's, oh, that would have been sick yeah i missed the boat on that stuff eh? because i suck at bloody like read write yeah you know like um like i'm an audiobook guy like you know i, I do a lot of uh speech text yeah um prefer like you know youtube podcasts rather than but i'd like to write i just a bit shit like yeah. i'm way better now because but like i'm glad no one told me that i like i obviously there's something cognitively that doesn't piece together yeah like um and so from what i read it was like that the i kind of this is the way me or the brain type that i have or whatever um cognitively has to try and piece together each letter to make mm-hmm. the word mm-hmm. and so then that's why reading is quite challenging and i'm quite slow and um like writing was always a challenge like yeah. you know at school just back in the day like they were like okay ro- you know write out this bloody book like word for word yeah and i'll just like, be so slow everyone's finished or like read this and, like how are you already finished i just want to film a studying eh? like it took I think that's partly responsible for how I didn't get in is how I went through high school through NCA is reading and remembering and I'd write it out once and it'd stick. But then when it came to the sheer volume of biomedical science, I thought like I could do that same thing. And right. yeah, it was so, like, it was like, nah. <laughs> yeah, it was the opposite for me. So I was like, and like I said, my mum gave me my report cards. Yeah. I was, I thought I was, actually i knew i wasn't a great student but reading those i was worse than i thought like they were worried i wouldn't get ue right you know like i kind of sucked <laughs> um and i and i remember and it, it was like emotional reading them because i remember trying so hard yeah like you know like we've talked i have a phd i run ultra like i i'm hard work and me like we're good like yeah. I'm, I'm happy fine um and so i'd work really hard and i'd get like achieved and, and it wasn't clicking because like you said nca is like this is going to be the answer kind yeah. of, these are the questions like learn them and we'll teach you like that and then i got to uni and uh i just but it, it just clicked man i yeah. just figured it out i was like i'm gonna learn like this uh-huh. and i was like oh here we go like a's and like i love this topic and i'm they just give you the information here mm. you go go learn it and i was like all right well after first year i've just you know pretty much failing engineering being drunk and then like switching what tripped you out was it maths or or the whole thing what's that with engineering um no it was getting drunk yeah like too much way too much i i only as 108 math 108 yeah that i failed and then i passed it uh so i would just had to gone back in the summer Mm -hmm. and um yeah i still luckily because we had so many engineers in first year and they were my mates and stuff we all studied together so i got through um i would add stay for the summer but i was like i don't want to borrow that that was Mm. funny now i would love it like i I would but at the time um yeah glad i didn't what sort of engineering did you aspire to or were you just doing engineering well because i uh like was working hard Mm. and i was in like you know blue collar all boys school go to engineering get a good job Mm -hmm. like you know you're 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 smart enough Mm -hmm. like go to do engineering like you've got a few options you know do engineering do accounting do law it was atrocious like i said at reading writing so i wasn't gonna do that law yeah (laughs) and then um do medicine and i wasn't gonna do medicine so i was like go do engineering yeah yeah and it's like there's all the options you get then you go to uni and you're like there's a few more options out here oh, actually sure. <laughs> that no one tells you some about. of them are questionable <laughs> <laughs> they, they were yeah. yeah so that engineering mind though when it comes to, like you mentioned gps what, what is the little thing that you put on you is it on your shoe yeah it's just, down. just down there uh there's a stride power yeah. meter yeah i've got a couple of different ones actually but yeah yeah so what do you want to know about that everything i don't, I don't know much about it i've just see, seen it on your page <laughs> yeah 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 uh so the thing i clip on my shoe is i mean it's called a running power meter you know anyone familiar with cycling or any maybe even in the mechanical sense of a, a power meter is measuring work done over time yeah and so like that's super important when you're um exercising because you want to know like if i know how much work i'm doing yeah. then i can infer how much like metabolic work i'm doing and then i can correlate this to like you know i can measure 
a 20 minute test you mm-hmm. know and i can go well that's how much work i did and so now if i'm running up a hill like this is i can kind of go at this power output right mm-hmm. because I'm, this hill's going to take me 20 minutes and i know i can do this much work whereas at the moment like everyone out there is pretty much just using gps all mm. right so you go so your 20 minute test is typically more like a 5k park run you go or just you just try and everyone 5k time trial like everyone kind of knows mm-hmm. they want to do a fast 5k you go do that and your gps says whatever four minutes 430 your average pace all right cool and you go oh i'm gonna do this like 10k trail run or whatever mm-hmm. i'm gonna try and run a bit slower but actually there's trail and there's hills and it's like well how do you measure your effort mm. you're like oh you can use heart rate sure um and so first you've got to understand heart rate and then it's like the yeah, text zone two up there yeah yeah <laughs> um then you uh th- then you get into this textbook thing where it's like zone two heart rate use that and it's like okay we'll go do and then go measure lactate and then go <laughs> yeah we'll go do a five minute sprint or yeah. not five minute sprint but go do a five minute effort from like you know after standing around for a minute and it'll take you your heart rate will barely reach a representative number of that effort until the end of the five minutes mm-hmm. so if you're in a race and you're cruising along and you've got this hill and you're just trying to run your 430s or your five minute k's or whatever and you look at your heart rate and it's oh yeah dr will see keep it under 160 well it's still there and then by the top of the hill it starts to keep going up and up and up and you're like okay well now i'm at 170 running down this other side so i was probably going too fast mm. up that but we because heart rate because of the it's like the delayed nature of um the metabolic requirements or energetic mm. requirements of the cell and then our actual oxidative transportation so that's oxygen we breathe in and transport to get energy um and then blowing off co2 it's all slow it's a slow system to be able to provide um like energy in the way we need it when we're exercising and so we use this this device where we can clip onto our shoe and it has i'm not sure what the new one has but i know the other one had like a, like a nine axis accelerometer so mm. it could measure um like just displacement with time because that's what's space. in those rug, rugby monitors they yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and they can they can measure like impact force and all yeah that totally yeah, yeah so that um and it's hard for people to get their head around like it is with ai because it's like this isn't your brain mm. in one of these devices this is something like that's so is off the scale smarter than you so because you're are like they using like decision trees or what's what's going yeah on yeah so uh so what it can do is it can because they're so they're, they're so sensitive that when your foot hits the ground like the, the sensitive accelerometer measures displacement even just like the slight displacement of your shoe cushion mm-hmm. compressing and taking off so you can when you input your uh height and your height and weight so that's you have to input these metrics you can um you can get a fair idea about the amount of I guess the way they infer it is not mechanical but more metabolic work mm-hmm. uh, that you're doing because you can see like well the, the foot and essentially you are moving through space mm. in this motion um, so which is going to equate to and then alongside GPS you can also kind of feed in a bit of calibration for what that would re- represent in terms of speed mm-hmm. um, and so but if your foot if a 75 kg male who's 187 centimeters tall which is me if his foot's moving in this manner over 30 seconds one minute he's most probably exerting this much energy mm-hmm. you know um whereas when you're thinking about cycling there's a strain gauge in the crank or in the spindle or in the rear hub or wherever and so as soon as you apply force or torque Mm. to like on your pedals you push on the pedal the strain gauge just measures how much torque is there and so um then again it's work over time uh was it um force times distance equals work Mm. right so then you know how much but then it's um instead of because it's on the crank oh, i'd have to think through my physics again but anyway <laughs> it's really easy it's just a strain gauge and mm. so it just measures it and what's the distance is um measured like in terms of this like um the uh what am i thinking diameter of 
the circumference of like the pedaling mm. circle but um so yeah that's really easy but when we come to running then we have these we need like there's just a little more calculation that goes into it and now they have them built in what kind of watch you got that's a uh, gentleman's watch there. yeah <laughs> Daniel Wellington yes uh, doesn't he have the date <laughs> like DW yeah nice fancy uh, yeah so nowadays new GPS watches are getting running power built in mm-hmm. so now people are seeing it but it's it's one of these uh, it's a non like homogenous metric that every company is doing their own mm. algorithm into it whereas when you have a strain gauge and you have an 80 kg rider putting you know whatever 500 newtons into the into the pedal like it's only going to read plus or minus like mm. a certain amount so everyone like if you like you can just say i'm doing 500 watts like you can say i'm doing four minute k's and mm-hmm. everyone knows what you're talking about mm-hmm. and in cycling um, the relative measure we use or they use or you would use is watts per kg mm. It's like, oh, I'm doing 500 watts. You're like, wow, that's a lot. You're like, oh, you weigh 100 kg, so that's five watts per kg. That's not that crazy. Mm. Um, But then in running, just again, you can't even use that really because there's um, running economy that comes. I was about to say, then you get the biomechanics of the runner. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and uh, so so it's going to take a while for for people to get there. But Mm. at the, it's so much better than pace. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been writing about this, and um, you'll be able to get it soon on like as like a free downloadable resource that goes along with my training zones calculators. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's like everyone uses pace, right? You can say I ran four minute k's, five minute k's, six minute miles, and or Ultron. It's just a so and so hours. That's just time on league. Don't worry <laughs> <Yeah>. about it. <laughs> and uh, and people know, right? Yeah. They're like, yeah, cool. Oh, like wow, that's fast. Like yeah. I can only do my park run in this, and but it's it's so it's there's no relativity in uh-huh. it at all. It's like, well, what's that as a percentage of your threshold? Everyone's like, well, I don't care. Like I care about running faster and. Uh, then when you so when you use this number and you run around the Rotorua Redwoods or you're running around um, Cougar Park and Tokoroa, mm. like it means nothing. It means nothing to yeah. It, it all needs to be a relative metric, and then it needs to be actually applicable. And so these new devices are, are providing us with that, but mm. everyone's kind of it's new. You know, it's like it's, so. What was that stuff that Nike and Adidas had for like in your shoe and in your boot? Was that just straight GPS tracker? Oh, way back. Yeah. When they had, uh, what was that called? Zoom. Was that what Nike One was? Was that just the shoe brand? I can't remember. That was just a shoe brand. I I, my, my first pair of actual proper running shoes had like the little cavity in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> the Luna, um, Luna Glides or something. Um, no, that was just like a cadence pod. Right, yeah. And so they just, they could measure uh, kind of speed a little bit through same like just a very rudimentary yeah um accelerometer in it so it was like oh yeah well you're you you're moving through space like this so you're probably running you know like your um your cadence is this is how many steps you took in a minute Mm -hmm. and then you put your height and then so it's kind of interpreting oh you probably like we're doing about a meter 60 per step Mm. and so because you don't need a very smart accelerometer to be able to figure that out Mm -hmm. uh so yeah (laughs) buzzy and that was like 2009 10 right 12 12 yeah but they would they came out before that before that yeah 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 because i remember the i remember looking at it actually yeah no i remember the uh blue and black predators they had a cavity in them did they yeah yeah so that was it was the World Cup we lost against France in <laughs> yeah, 2009. Yeah. I remember it based on the boots. I was a big... Boot. No, wasn't that 2007? Nine, wasn't it? Nine? That was seven, because when I was in the halls. Eleven. Yeah, seven. You know, it was seven. Yeah. And then a guy um, yeah. burnt the... Uh, he must have burnt the All Blacks flag. Because anyway, that's illegal, eh? Yeah. You're like, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Oh, the Zoom flag. Maybe not the All Blacks flag. No, not the All Blacks flag. <laughs> Trade trademark violation. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, rugby, rugby union, World Cup. Oh gosh, it's all, it's all. Oh, up. it's on. Yeah, yeah. It's Saturday is it? It's Saturday ninth. 
Yeah, it must be. Shit. You follow it? Um, do I follow it? Yes, I've been I've been getting back into sport uh, supporting. <laughs> like, yeah. like like I said, that when I was in that last year in Dunedin, there was the uh, shield rain of the stags, first time in fifty years. So it was quite yeah. exciting. That was yeah. Like, um, it's because I was into fully into rug, fantasy rugby and everything. Yeah. You know, every player like um, uh, yeah. So like the the individual team fantasy as well as like the team based yeah. fantasy rugby. Just yeah, all over it. And then like I've just uh, alongside my like exodus of the sport mm. and also has kind of coincided with the accessibility of other yes sports like on demand yeah. like whenever wherever um and not having to rely on just a sky set top box in your house yeah. like uh means that like i've really like every single year over the last decade i've got less and less yeah this year i've, I've gone back, back into it i've watched You've watched three or four of the Stags games this season. Oh, wow. So that's like yeah. pretty. Because I was like, is this just me? Or because other people I talk to as well, just like my old man was like, you know, obviously we just grew up rugby. Yeah. Like, and then he would also be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I missed that game or something. Yeah. Like, is this happening? Like, is this a thing? Or no, it's like, definitely a thing. Yeah. I've, I've, I have to be quite conscious of it. And like, <laughs> then, like, even like Friday night, I follow the Roosters with the NRL. Yeah. And I looked at what time they were playing, and it was at like nine thirty. I was like, "No, nah, I'm not watching that." Like they had to, they had to win that game, and it was against the Rabbitohs. Like it would have been great to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, I can't do it. Like I've I've got to get up and go to work and function and do all these things. Yeah, just, yeah. Just can't do Whereas it. Whereas back in like beforehand, do you reckon that's just like a maybe it's getting old? <laughs> getting old, sure. <laughs> sure. Like, uh, I didn't even I didn't even have the family the next day. I just was. But stuck. like a lack of, um, yeah, just like the. The I also think you're like, you're like new, you knew a lot more of the players as well. That, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a lot of the guys from school, the year above you, the yeah. year below you. Well, I was at Haggis, so none of them came from our school. But <laughs> yeah, South and Boys High, we just won the uh, secondary schools I saw the other day, which is really buzzy. Wow. It was, it was against um, Westlake as well. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah. Is that like... <laughs> They've yeah. got like divisions and stuff now. Yeah, Is I don't know. Like what's, under 60s or something. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> nah, 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 this was the first 15 comp. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe the likes of St. Kent's and... Because they stopped putting on TV, eh? Oh, uh, that was probably a good move. Well, yeah. that's why, right? Because it was like getting too hardcore. I actually watched some of that. I enjoyed that more. Yeah. The, the Land Rover, <laughs> Land Rover um, first, first 15. 15. Yeah, they went hard, man. Like that was good because it was just like... It was a bit more raw. It was like, yeah. I think it became so professional and so like um manufactured yeah you know? i think i think especially at that time for me like i'd come from playing football all through high school went up to auckland like i played um youth league and stuff down south so a classic case of like small small for a small pond you know you can do all right and then yeah, i went up there tried to play at at century united that owned auckland city at the time when that was the thing and it was just like came off the bench scored a goal and then I had an exam on the Tuesday nights. So I missed Tuesday training. And they're like, oh, no, you're not playing on the weekend. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you know, you, you kind of you get back to that, like, delusionality. You always had it in your head, like, do you know who I am? Do you know what I've done? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, man. <laughs> we've got, we've got uh, professionals that we don't pay, inverted commas. Um, and, yeah, like, we've got all whites here. You know, we've got people that are uh, trying to play for Phoenix and shit. And, like, we don't, we don't care about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Auckland. Like, go away. Yeah. And... So then I changed to rugby and I think, you know, like got into the pre-academy internet and I was just like pushing so hard. And yeah, so then it was like absorbing everything, watching everything. Yeah, like I knew how to play rugby, but then I was like, well, how do you actually be a lead in rugby? Like what is, you know, that would be, that'd be where I'd like tune in on one player, like Dan Carter, like what, you know, be like, make, make it a wide field shot. I want to see what he's doing, where he's going, you know. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Same with Richard McCoy. I'm just like, where is he going? Like, what's his line? Like his... Rich McCaw's line is so positive, eh? He just, like, runs across the field. And the people are like, why is he at that breakdown? It's like, because he's run behind the def- the defensive line to make it for, hopefully, his player to end up over the advantage line. It's, yeah, yeah. It's unreal stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that was, like, sort of level of geekness. So then when I couldn't, well, yeah, couldn't really play anymore, I was like, oh, I can't watch this. <laughs> can't watch it anymore. And, like, the same thing. It's like, you've got to be plugged into your skybox. Whereas... Yeah, and then I didn't have a TV for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, that again was another like detachment. Like you could have watched it on a laptop, but yeah, 
then you got to rig it up <laughs> not like like you say you're a student for some reason you're paying for sky and yeah or you are uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could get the uh, second home. Yeah, you get the second home decoder for twenty five bucks a month. Yeah, and so then we actually just like pulled a dish off our mate's flat and just put it on our fence. And we but like the wind would blow and it would like because it wasn't even on the fence; it was on the gate that was just like always open, <laughs> and just outside the window. Yeah, and we'd like have to bend it and like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, Southerly it's, came through again. It's the same with Sky Go now, although that, that, that app is glitchy as shit. It yeah. sucks, eh? Yeah. It sucks. And I was like, they, like, if you're trying to, because they introduced Chrome, like, casting. Yeah. Like, last year or something. And I was like, they're doing this real shit on purpose, eh? Because they know. Like, why yeah. are you casting this if you actually are using it? Like, if you're the paying user, yeah. why are you not watching it on your TV? Like, yeah. why are you casting this? Because, yeah, there, there's there's not that problem with um with the TMNZ app. It like it works pretty well, yeah. <laughs> except for the World Cup uh, semi final against England at the last World Cup. I remember there was a massive cutout on that, <laughs> but that was when, oh, that yeah, was when yeah, yeah. was in the early days. Yeah, yeah. No. So, so do you write for your website now? Like you say, you sort of felt you weren't that good at writing. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I write. Heaps. I've got a weekly blog going on my yeah. training at the moment. Um, yeah. And is that in blog form or yep. newsletter form or both? Yeah, uh, I just I I started it up just to check out Substack. Yeah, have you seen it? Yeah, for those who don't know, it's kind of like the YouTube for blogs. Yeah, and uh, it's been really positive, and I think like I think blogs are coming back. Is there is there a way to input what you've already done? No, no. And so, uh, yeah, living online like as an online like I'm an online business. Yeah. Um, by like a couple local people. Um, even then, I still meet with them like online just for. Mm like uh efficiency but uh yeah the the content game is just forever changing you're in it like mm. you, it's just forever changing and yeah, i've like, got a wordpress and then yeah i was like i don't have actually a database anywhere yeah you know like anchor says this many people subscribe and like cool where are they yeah <laughs> i know yeah yeah so you got to have a newsletter but then like Oh, you to get the subscribers to like your newsletter or you need to um, offer something or, like yeah and so i did that um but then you got to continuously provide value mm. to them and then um so i was writing a lot of blogs and some of them did really well but then i'm also coaching a lot of people and i'm also putting out youtube videos and then like there's instagram which i've just like stopped for the last few weeks mm-hmm. and um then there's like the Substack thing and there's like Strava. Um, so like in our world, I really wish Strava was a bit better mm-hmm. at a, as a social platform and I'd just use that because I have a prompt to upload and share information every day because oh, wow. I exercise every day. Yeah. Um, uh, compared, and it's like directly my audience base, like yeah. my um, catchment, um, 35 to 50 year old men. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the odd, 35 to 50 year old female it's, it's a great tool for a challenge <laughs> Game, gamifying is always fun <laughs> yeah yeah for that um but then like the addicts like us we like need it you know yeah. it's like social proof stuff uh so yeah but then yeah for sure i still write and then uh, i like a few years back i got grammarly everyone's probably seen the mm. real annoying ads on youtube um and that just really taught me how to write like yeah. actually why why like why is this comma here like yeah. why and so now i'm far far better and then now um me and my mate warren who is what i call chat gpt hey, you and, call him chat gpt yeah i call him and it's, <laughs> i was gonna I'm, say have you used chat gpt but you've already got you've already got one <laughs> I, I call him warren yeah and we go hard man like i'm yeah it's just ai is exactly what i needed like prompts and then just like being able to manipulate an article where it or he um as i call it like Mm. can just write the thing and then i can massage it Mm. into like my words Mm. um and the the application to my audience base and then i can get it proofed through like a software system like Mm. like grammarly and then it's all it's just so much more efficient than like like hidden like writing because some stuff just like miss you know i'll get you've probably done some episodes like you get like a hundred downloads or something you're like what i got like a few thousand dollars and you just or like an instagram post it's like three likes and a reach of 50 and you're like i 
Have you played on TikTok? <laughs> it's even more gross. No, I don't even. Yeah. I don't, I, I, and then you're like, I don't know. You know it, I think it's like Toys You, eh? It would be like, are you stuck on this number of followers? I'm sure there's like, uh, they have somebody's repeated that video for like every level of thing. Yeah. It's just like, that just so happens to be what you were stuck on. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, um, <laughs> yeah. So over the years, or the last five years, essentially, um, I've learned a lot of the game. Like, mm. and I've learned a lot of like these vanity metrics mm-hmm. of, reads and watches and subscribers and views and all of this shit and uh in the end like for me as not necessarily a pure content creator mm. um i provide a, a a coaching service i also have training plans like mm. that you can purchase and courses that you can purchase and it's really like well if i have 1000 of the exact client base that i need 1000 true fans yeah right and yeah. then and so it doesn't really matter whatever the number is. Like, I don't have big numbers. You know, 1,500 on YouTube, 1,500, 2,000 Instagram, um, yeah, 1,000 Strava. Like, they're not big numbers. A few thousand on some of the podcasts. Some of the videos have done really well, like mm. um, 10, 20,000. But, it, like, I can only coach, like, a client base of, like, 20 mm. ongoing. And so that's not that many people as a percentage of those numbers. Mm. Um and then but then you know i was saying to you beforehand i got monetized on youtube and it's like well if you want to play that content game the numbers matter like mm. they just so then then you start getting drawn in because if you start getting into those um vanity metrics you start to create algorithm based mm. Mr. material <laughs> yeah and you create um are you stuck at this many subscribers yeah. this is how to create a course business this is how to create like the easiest way to make a podcast and I've watched all that shit, right? And yeah. what grinds me about it so much, how to create an email list, how to yeah. create a following on Substack. And it's like, everything is life. If you guys, you're listening, you know it. Life's fucking hard. Like, mm. It's just hard. It's real hard. Everything's real fucking hard. And unless you're real good at it and real, like you're going to watch Richie McCall do his lines. Like, mm. Not do his lines, but like, you know, <laughs> run his lines. Run his lines. Uh, in your spare time, you're not going to be a better rugby player like unless you're exceptionally gifted and then in the online space like you want to become like a an influencer or a creator or something it's just this so like i've just been writing a script for like the last week for the intro of my video Mm. so i can just at least um get the content i want to the people Mm -hmm. because otherwise like if you have a shit thumbnail and a shit title Mm. no one clicks on it Mm. because it doesn't create intrigue and then if you just opening 10 seconds is a bit shit and especially the opening minute no one stays and then you get a bad um click like well the thumbnail title is the click through rate and then the um the watch time and mm. watch percentage goes well, down and then you get hidden and yeah now that's you're why not, i stopped you're not putting my podcast up for a long time because of those metrics and then thankfully youtube's changed it that you can create podcasts now yeah yeah and so that's kind of like taking all of that content they had out of that type of measurement <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so is there is it measured in a different way because i kind of i've put a few videos over there but i yeah. and i haven't and it, so. i think it is but you know it's still just that's that's still going to boost the podcast if they get watched <laughs> what's that that's still going to boost the podcast they get watched yeah sure oh, totally yeah. like if it's if it's crap and it's filmed crap then yeah. they're not that keen to <laughs> no yeah <laughs> yeah. uh, it's more for the instagram than the youtube but yeah uh, uh, you were talking about the thumbnail thing i've really have started mucking around with thumbnails and i have definitely seen it like change i'm like oh there's something to this bloody thumbnail is it any <laughs> ridiculous you know, there's, there's a job thumbnail artist yeah it's like a job yes yeah. it's, it's and i can see why it. it's like oh man just yeah it's such a challenge just to get information out these days yeah. like um until you gain that uh uh what is it like i guess proof of work when yeah. you you have a following that people know but um yeah it's gonna be interesting like with you know graphic design is a degree but yeah. there's all these people that are you know running thumbnails out of canvas and selling you know small scale content on hiver and you know do they do they need a degree anymore like no way no no way i like <laughs> Fiber, sorry, you not know, fiber. Um, yeah. Do you get the emails from NZ? Um, so, was it Ministry of Innovation Enterprise? No. MB? MBIE, yeah. So, they got this digital boost thing. Yeah. So, you got a free consultation to like 
meet with an expert in the digital space to yeah. like help bring New Zealand businesses in the 21st century. So I was like, more oh, dialed. And I was like, look, I've got, I've got podcasts, I've got Instagram, I've got these, you know, there's TikTok, there's reels, there's shorts, um, there's mm-hmm. like email lists, there's like my blogs. And I was like, look, I'm on one guy, how do I concentrate this? I've got the Strava thing, which is really, you know, specific to my blah, blah. And then it's like, what you're doing is really good and blah blah and i was like have you have you started an online business before no you haven't you do have no idea like <laughs> you can read you're telling me what like a five minute youtube video has told me like yeah. i know all of the stuff i like you got to be in the game man like you just have to it's moving so fast like you can't you pretty much can't create a course business anymore whereas me and matt made lots of money off of courses in 2020 when the lockdown happened yeah you know and uh online like paying for like a yeah a course right an online course like a learning experience mm. um people don't have that excess um no, that's COVID happening. cash yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and the marketplace is saturated and people are time poor again yeah and so it's like yeah, everyone's so- got everyone's going back to their core business they're not worried about their their side hustle anymore they're like, how, do I, how do i make more money doing the thing i'm doing yeah yeah and like school sports back on. like it's just busy people are busy again so now they're oh, like, that's another one isn't it like everyone's looking after their families taking their kids and things to the stuff they yeah, do for like two years we didn't have that yeah and so everyone was like hmm, this is i'm really interested in this i have like i haven't been going on holiday i haven't mm. been able to renovate my house or do anything like i've got a bit of spare cash like i'll give a couple hundred here 500 here to like learn how to um you know become a running coach or whatever become a sports science um you know upskill myself mm. now it's like i don't have any of that time or that cash so it's like this business models not you know, it's, wow yeah it's just like it just moved and then like we're just talking about Substack. blogs were gone yeah they like, were they yeah. were gone now they're back like mm. they're coming back i'm not getting all these subscribers to this platform that is specifically for writers mm. and like a written form content that is like youtube so it's like an algorithm based like you'll get prompted on like or if you like this you'd probably like this blog mm. as well or like this guy or this collective um and now they're, they're back yeah. yeah 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 um guy that i met hayden through um uh, oh, sorry yes that's right guy that i met hayden through uh siobhan yeah he's on substack so he he was an optometrist and now he's become a uh, computer programmer and yeah. he's now working in programming he's not an optometrist anymore yeah and so he's been he tried to vlog and then now he's been blogging i think he's been blogging the whole time and he's just moved to substack yeah and yeah so being a subscriber of his substack then like, like i say he just gets suggested stuff all the time it comes into email you're like yeah oh, yeah i haven't, haven't followed through but i know exactly what you're talking about yeah yeah in the, if, but then like yeah still um converting those people to paying people yeah it's different, that's, that's different a, game in, different in game man. yeah that's for you yeah, yeah. The, you got to turn them into curious to thousand raven fans yeah yeah but uh from what i've found is like you got to know you got to know the game or the platform you're playing with yes. like if you want to be a podcaster you got to know the game um but if you're just genuine if you are a genuine thought leader and an expert in your field and you can convey information you'll do well it's just going to take time yeah no one's like oh whoops i made a hundred grand this year like no one no no one like (laughs) there could be like this accidental perfect storm of like you uploaded this random video or you've leveraged something else yeah yeah oh there's plenty of that there's plenty of that like you these people like oh yeah i sold this business because you know before that i'd spent five years making this million dollar business but this billion dollar one was like the one like wait what i thought you just yeah. you know um no one you know no one it's like i feel like this year in terms of the client base um i kind of just exploded like yeah. i just the amount of inquiries i'm getting each week has just been nuts it's like oh yeah i have been doing this like a lot you yeah. know but the, the the thought that comes to mind is like when you think about joe rogan you go so he started stand-up comedy the year i was born or we were born yeah you know? and so then what there was 12 or 15 years or well, probably 12 years and then he was on news radio then he's on um bloody fear factor you know 
Meanwhile, he's all some somewhere in the year he's doing UFC. <laughs> the year in around two thousand eight, oh no, two thousand thirteen or something. He starts this podcast. Now it's twenty twenty three, ten years on. You know, there's like thirty five years of work. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. And he was doing podcasts like way back, yeah, like way back in the game. Yeah, um, and already with notoriety, and like what does he say? Already had fuck you money. <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. So not only did he have notoriety, he had the that and that first mover advantage, but that first mover advantage to do a really good job from the outset. Yeah. Like, like I said, it was us on the internet with my friends, but like that was a big deal back then. And then there was like it was set up a studio with the best mics, with 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 a producer, with the best cameras. You know, yeah. Off the bat, he's running three cameras. It's being produced. You know, he like. That's that's like that's where the, the apples and oranges things of of you put in the work. Like while I'm six years deep of podcasting, you know, I was talking to somebody today about oh, I've done three hundred episodes. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, never heard of it. You know, but you didn't know someone in Table's doing podcasts, and I bet I'm not the only one in Table doing podcasts. Yeah, no way. Yeah, no. yeah, there'd be a bunch of people like around the place that are doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, but yeah, I mean, you're probably you're talking about getting cameras and whatnot, and it's like. I think at some point you you kind of got to invest, mm. you know, like if you want to, if you, anyone listening out there is like, mm, maybe I'd like to make a job out of, this. it's like, it's going to cost a lot. Yeah. It's going to cost about as much as any other business you would want to set up. Yeah. Like actually, like you can do a pretty small scale one and do it slowly, which is typically what a lot of people do. Like they'll probably start slow and then just not fail. They just give up. Like, mm. It's because like, well, actually my job pays me every single week and mm. everything else doesn't so it's like uh you kind of stop otherwise if you go hard from the start and then because like i said the online space just moves so quickly you mm. got to like you, you got to be in it and then you go okay that was suck that was shit that was the bad name and like fell fast <laughs> yeah yeah and then just and reiterate and yeah. then, and then go and you can definitely make money online it's like what's the, i don't even know what the population of the world is but like even just the population of the niche that you're interested in yeah. so one of the best pieces of advice i got was like keep narrowing your niche mm. like keep speaking to that exact person and they'll love you and they'll love the content they'll relate to them and they'll be more likely rather than being like i want to talk just to just to fishermen mm. like just like what fish, like it was like you talk to the one with that has a, a you know 14 footer and like just does this type of fishing with Mate, this. back to tiktok there's some tiktokers that are like doing awesome fishing content like you know matt watson you know outdoors with jeff like yeah you know, um what, what's another brand just another fisherman branding like you know um yeah all those reels companies and stuff like that shimano you know, yeah. again shimano's in fishing shimano's in mountain biking <laughs> it's just like yeah there's this shit out there hey yeah yeah every single you know um i just before i got injured i was getting into starting to get into rock climbing yeah oh <laughs> yeah so anyway i went to the uh we're up um the one uh you got a place up in silverdale you know in yeah. albany there's a place uh northern rocks which is just a bouldering gym yeah and uh they had these little brushes that, yeah you know you like what you brush out the um like the holds yeah like it's just get a bit of filth or whatever grime and stuff off of them get some more chalk on it or or whatever fills up and they had all these different colors and they were like silicon handles and i was like damn this is like a thing yeah like you know like uh, there's like these foot pod stuff and there's like you know i know about I was sh- even, socks and shoes i was even watching it again on tiktok this thing that this guy had a like four blocks put, um, set up and he had a couple of holds stuck to it and it was called finger bouldering and he basically like worked his way around this puzzle, like with his fingers. And like, um, um, a man of my brother's has a crate set up with bouldering hanging inside, and all these different like you know finger holds and stuff like that. Uh, and you're right; it's just like it's a thing. It's like you get the, just yeah. Now with the with to, with social media, where you just go hard, man. Go as hard, or woman. Like go as hard as on the thing that you really really like. There's a million people out there. Yeah like just totally sold on exactly what you love so so go for it and there'll be a, like a banger content creator or a couple like and then someone and like there's just content and there's like the you know like vloggers and stuff and you're like go for it go all day all yeah. night like there'll be content for you 
as that. Yeah. That's, what, that's what's been called in the NRL with them sort of not, they've got a disagreement with the media or something. So like all the clubs have been doing their own shit. And yeah. It's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, I think something's going to change there. I like, um, because uh, I triathlons my sport that I follow probably yeah. the most. Because running is like quite an an like unex- inaccessible, 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 yeah. inaccessible. Um, As opposed to inaccess. Like, <laughs> uh, like there's really well produced stuff for the some like Elliot Kipchoge, some two hour mm. project, like um, team NN, but they're not vlogging. Like they're just mm. gonna run as fast as possible. Cameron Haynes running up his hill. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but in triathlon, there's uh, long distance, especially lots of vloggers, like yeah. lots of, or have their own media person. But now I'm like, it was initially cool. And now there's, I follow a couple of the, the big names that do the best stuff, but it's all the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all like, unless you like really love the personality, I'm like this, this game's getting saturated, mm. right? You've got like, I th- there's this one track workout that there's like three different athletes that, that I saw uploaded on all three of their channels. I was like, <laughs> now they're going to compete. Like, and then they just had the 70.3 half Ironman world champs. Yeah. And so many of them have their own vlog or media team. And it's like, well, <laughs> who's getting the footage? Yeah. Like, you know, who's allowed to film what? And it's all just the same thing. Like, oh, that person did the good race and that was the shit race. And I already know what happened here. And it's like, so I think people just get over seeing that their lives aren't that special. Like they are quite hard and they're only sharing the good stuff. And like, you know, it's just, yeah. Yeah. No, it is going to be an interesting space. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of who I follow. Like Cameron Haynes, I follow and, but then his is just like running up the hill. He's, he's not working anymore. That used to be his thing. I'm running at the, running in the morning, go to work, running at lunch. Go to work. Yeah. But you'll always follow that name. Yeah. Right? It's like uh and tri- Lionel Sanders is just like this was like a drug addict that found triathlon mm. now. It's like this just wears his heart on his sleeve, so open and shit just keeps happening to him. It's like really well produced and it's just like I'll always watch that one. Mm-hmm. But then you start to watch these other ones and they're a bit less produced and then like the personality might not be there as there, you've got to get invested into the person and it's just like you know? Yeah, like you said, UTMB, like I brought up Courtney DeWalder. I've tried to follow her in the past and I stopped following her. And that's now with those, those three races winning them, she's like back on the on the radar again. But I'm like, ah, oh, I've tried to follow her and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like she's, you know, smiley and happy and likes pizza and cheeseburgers and lollies and stuff. But like it's like quite quirky. But yeah, I didn't didn't manage to stay in that, in that one where it's like, yeah. And there's plenty of people like like then you know the individual athletes especially mm. it's like mm, that might not be that a vibe like yeah. you know like the great people nothing wrong with them but like on camera it's just not yeah it's not clicking you know no <laughs> <laughs> oh what a rabbit hole awesome well well where do people find you Dr Will O'Connor <laughs> yeah pretty much um, I mean yeah i don't know if you just googled that if i'd actually pop up probably wouldn't i'd be like second page or something well now but you're on the stack world the seo's got to go through the roof, through the roof. <laughs> yeah, make sure you hit me with those backlinks yeah that's so hard <laughs> uh yeah it's at, i've been pretty lucky i've been able to get dr will o'connor across the like all the platforms so at dr will o'connor across everything and dr will o'connor.com nice yeah and uh i'll st- you can tag me in this and yeah. so it will pop up on my Instagram so it looks like I've done something for a lot <laughs> make you some content yeah yeah. it's actually running head first on Substack running head first yeah yeah. yeah. I did get this all right because <laughs> I was uh, like I was just like I was going to do something else I was just going to do more of a business one yeah. of like all the stuff I've talked about like being real shit online and crying <laughs> and all this maybe I still will but that's why I didn't like it's under I don't know well, like talking about it. Yeah, talk like blogging yeah. about it. Yeah. Blogging about um yeah, going. Well, that's what Shafan did about uh, having a having exi- uh, existential crisis with optometry. I want to do this thing. Here's me trying to learn it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, show your work kind <laughs> of thing. You'll be having another one now like, oh shit, now I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, you'll never be successful enough. Yeah. So, on that what does keep you in flow like do you have a way you live your life do you live by a quote or or um a mantra or anything like that that shows up when things are going well going along that's a tough one uh it's probably something you should put at the start 
you know? No, that's, that's the good one. <laughs> gotcha. All right, what would it be? Uh, look, probably there's a point there, uh, second year of COVID, where we're like, oh, there's so much going on. I, I was lecturing, I like was training for these, like I tried to do a 24 hour race and all of this. After that, it was like less. Yeah. So at, this year was like one of my main goals was like, how, how, not how much, how little yeah. can I do to, and how much more pro, productive and efficient can I be? Like, how can I be better for a better dad who's like, like hands on and present dad and then husband and then athlete like someone who like rather than trying to fit my training in like how can i enjoy it so it's mm-hmm. not like something i have to fit in then there's someone who's trying to coach people and then create content it's like i know doing less has always led to more mm. like and like i just said i kind of feel like i've blown up this year in terms of the amount of clients i've had and so i really really challenge myself to do less mm. and stop like oh yeah kindy time like today was 2 30 stopped um and then we went swimming and like and then until you came around you know mm. nothing and uh and i've just been way more productive awesome that's really cool um i think the tim Ferriss one is like what would this look like if it were easy is it is a cool cool mantra to have in here like when you're like oh i can't do this I'm like what would it look like if it's easy <laughs> I guess the mantra is it always ends up being fine. So I have a daily diary mm-hmm. um, and it's an app and so it gives you throwback today mm-hmm. and I've been doing about seven years now. Wow, yeah. So I read through and I was like, oh man, I remember going through that. That fucking sucked. I was like, that's fine a, now. That's a cool tool. Man. Fine now. It's got, it's, uh, I, it's the journey or yeah. journey, just journey app. And uh, yeah, it just every, every day or well, almost, but you read back on the stuff and you're like yeah you realize you've been through some stuff oh yeah (laughs) awesome thank you so much will all right mate appreciate it lovely